Well, welcome back to Colorado Springs Small Engine Repair. And in this episode, we're going to install a new carburetor on a Craftsman snowblower. Um, I worked on this previously um, and put the carburetor through the ultrasonic cleaner twice and it just surges when it runs. It, the engine's just up and down. Uh, so two times through the cleaner and it's still running like that and it's not worth messing with anymore. So we ordered a new carburetor. So we're going to get that installed. It's really not too bad of a job to change the carburetor out on these. Just got to take this heat shield off. And I got a Phillips head screwdriver. You need an eight millimeter socket. Um, you got to take the control knobs off. But overall, not not too difficult. I give it on like a, a one to 10, 10 being really hard and one being super easy. Um, I don't know, a two or a three? And you can see, I mean, I popped off the, the choke knob and this comes off. Just have to disconnect the kill switch. But there's your carburetor. And actually, it's easier to do these by taking the whole assembly off where it attaches. Gotta get some tools though. Gotta have a star T, T whatever Torx bit. Yep, there it is. I just find that it's easier to take it off here because there's this back bolt that holds the carburetor on and uh, it's just in a position that it's, it's not impossible to get in there and get it off. It's just tricky. So I just, I just dropped the whole thing. This one does have an on off switch for the gas, so I'm going to turn the gas off. I'll make sure it's off. And then just got to disconnect the priming line here. A pair of pliers or your fingers. This one's coming off because pretty easy because I've had it off before because I worked on it before and then the pliers to remove the clamp for the gas line then you just wiggle the gas line off now if this didn't have an on off switch for the gas I would uh, either uh, tilt the machine up so the gas runs that way or I'd have a, a screwdriver to plug the gas line with, but since the gas is off, we don't have to do that. Then you gotta remember where the linkage goes for the top of the carburetor. In this case, it goes right in the, the middle one here. Easiest way to remember that, get your phone out, take a picture. I've done this so many times now that uh, I don't really think about it. I just know that's where it goes. But for doing it for the first time, definitely take a picture. Um, all right, so now we're gonna disconnect the carburetor from the intake mount. Again, these are coming off easy because I've already had it apart twice. Um, I've had them times before where I, I cannot get these bolts out with a regular screwdriver. Um, I have a, what do you call it, a smack screwdriver. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but it's a screwdriver that you hit with a hammer and it helps break things free. All right, you keep this gasket. So there you go, the carburetor is off. Now there are some pieces we need off it because you'll see in the new carburetor, it doesn't have this mount right here. Uh, so we need to transfer that over and then also the piece for the choke here. 
um, needs to be transferred over. So on the front, these are just two Phillips. These can be on there really tight. Be, not, be careful not to strip them. immediately bring this over that piece goes up in there and just tighten it back on well let's get it started then put this in there there it goes Get the second one started. Uh, now we need to take that. I think those are little six and a half millimeter sockets. Let's see, what did I what did? Yep, six and a half. started. There we go. Transferred everything over. Um, I hook this back up and you go, oh no, which way did it go? Well, one of two ways. If you're not sure, just hold it up. Make sure it's going to line up. This existing gasket is not bad, so we're going to continue to use that. If it was uh, tore up or dry rotted or anything like that, we would definitely replace it, but the gasket is good, so we're just going to continue to use the same one. Oh man! Trying to balance it on the tire to do the video is making oh, a little bit of a challenge. Just get one started. You don't want it super tight. Get it started and then get your second one. Get the gasket lined up. Get 
started, tighten it up. You just need a, a, a Phillips to do this because these, these nuts on the back have a little lock washer on it and that lock washer will grip when you tighten it. All right, there we go. Um, remember where it went in the top of the carburetor? You put your linkage back on, get that. You get your gas line back on. Slide it on there with a pair of pliers. Put your clamp back over. You get your bolts for the mount up to the block. Just start them with your fingers. That one's a little bit harder to start with your fingers, so I'm still starting with my fingers. I'm just using the Torx bit with my fingers. You don't definitely don't want to cross thread anything on the block because as soon as you do, your chances of permanently ruining it are pretty high. But, all right, just tighten it up. I don't know if there's a torque spec for that. I, maybe there is. Um, just, I guess use common sense. Just kind of get it tight and then snug it. Snug it up. Um, hook your prime line back up. Turn our gas on. Sure no gas comes leaking out of the carburetor. We watch for that. So far looking good. Old carburetor in the trash. I don't even use that thing for spare parts because of the problem it gave me it twice all right and one other thing I like to do is before I put all this back on I like to start it up make sure it's going to run no need to put the shield back on to go to start it and it won't start and have to take it right back off um, this one has a kill switch with the throttle so I can definitely turn it off and I don't have to rely on the key being here I get asked this all the time. Should I use the electric start on my snowblower? The answer is yes. It's there for a reason. It should start with the pull start. And actually it should. Um, if it's tuned correctly, you should pull it one or two times and it should start. I, I like using the electric. So we'll put it in the turtle position. We'll almost full choke it. I'm in my garage, it's kind of warm. We'll prime it. Make sure there's a little bit of gas comes out. You can't see it, but I could see gas coming up at the top of the carburetor. We should be able to start it. Prime it a few more times.
happy with that. So we put the shield back on. Don't forget to hit, hook up the key, kill switch. And don't touch the exhaust right now. Don't burn yourself. It's hot. I'm not watching the timer on this video, so I guess in my closing I'll have to see how long it, it took to do this job. I'm guessing 8 or 10 minutes, tops. Can't see me probably over here hooking up the last screw that holds the shield on. But there's those, there's four total. And then the last step, put the choke lever back on, or choke knob, what do you wanna call it? Choke something other. <laughs> All right, I look back at that one main clip. It's about 13 minutes or so, so not too bad of a job um, to replace the carburetor out on one of these. Um, if it's your first time doing it, obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer, but uh, otherwise, it's already been tuned up. Um, oil change, spark plug, uh, check the belts, drivetrain, all that stuff is done on this one. It, it, we were just waiting on that carburetor, so um, it's ready to go. And um, yeah, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions about what I did, uh, please uh, put them down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.